morning. Believe it or not, the river isn't so psychotic today. I'm actually getting away using a three ounce and a four ounce lead. So some change from the last session where five ounces couldn't hold the bottom to today. It's also evident that there's been some flooding here because all the reeds are washed flat. But we're on the bank. Let's see how we get on today. So here we are on the river again. And the river isn't an absolute raging psychopath today. I've upped the leads to 4 ounce just to keep bed anchored and I could probably get away with only 3 ounce leads but as a rule I tend to really only use you know 3 as a lighter sort of weight but apart from that I've got I've got 2 rods in I'm not so sure I'll fish 4 rods or any more than I might put a third rod out but I'm limited on space so the, the, the wooden jetties that were on were kind of limited on space so I have two rods out, I have a big mackerel tail and a pollen out. So, we will see how they go. I've been tinkering. Yet again I have been tinkering. You all know my lead link is the uh, little bit of the mono. Well I was having problems casting uh, heavier leads on on a rotten bottom mono because you tie knots in it and that every knot you tie in like a mono in the main line of the mono like I don't know if this is going to pick it up but you see these little things here these are little knots so that weakens so instead of this 12 pound mono being 12 pound you've basically cut it in half twice so if I was to give this a little tug that would snap at one of these knots so I mean this is a four ounce lead so if you're going to cast this and give it plenty of oomph I find that you'll snap your rotten bottom. So I have been tinkering. I've been uh, looking at some of my sea angling friends and I've kind of devised a way of getting around using rotten bottom but still being able to cast, like properly cast it. And this is it. This is it here. So you have your you have your lead link, normal lead link. This is, I've actually made this thicker so it's demonstration so you can see it. This is 45 pound snag leader. You know, again, this is for demonstration so you can see it on this camera. And to the snag leader, you have a little casting clip and you have your rotten bottom and you have your lead. So when this hits the bottom, the lead comes off the little clip and it's connected by your six inches of monofilament. If your lead gets stuck, you can pull and snap the lead, lose the lead. You're not gonna not gonna worry about the lead. But because it's on the little clip, you can cast that to the stars. And it's not gonna do any damage. This is just my way like this is just a like a quick way of getting around an issue. Now, I know it works for sea angling, because I've done it myself for sea angling. And the little black clip I'm using today, this little clip here is a, it's actually a very old fox deadbait casting clip. Um, there used to be, I used to fish, it was a strange method. You put your hooks on very, very lightly to the side of your bait. Or because it's like a sardine, the bait goes soft and you can't get it back anyway. I would thread a loop of uh, monofilament, like two or three pound mono with a bait needle through the bait's head so it makes a loop of line out the top of the bait's head and you would connect it to this little clip so all the force of the cast is through the bait's head with the mono not through the hooks so you're not ripping the hooks out so there we go the uh rotten bottom lead link so when it hits the bottom the little clip comes out and you go to normal 
the other end's just a loop and you slip that through your run ring uh, so it looks like uh, so it look like that you can use any run ring you want you can use the plastic ones or you can use the catfish pro ones don't make a difference a run rings a run ring that's just a, a catfish pro one So, we're going to give it a go on this, on these rods today, and I'm going to deliberately load them up. I'm going to put six ounce leads on and uh, cast them to see if I can get away with casting. I mean, for all I know, the little the little plastic clip could break. You know, I have made up some wire ones. It's just a simple loop and a little little half hook from the wire. So, if the plastic ones don't work, I'd prefer to use the plastic ones because there's no weight in them. The wire ones have a little bit of weight and because you're using a wire hook or a wire and making it kind of into a hook, I think it might tangle. But I'm not, I like I said, I haven't tested it yet on pike fishing gear. So today will be the, uh, the test runs for them. So that's something. Always uh, tinkering, always thinking. Every day being a school day and all that sort of stuff. A few moments later. Hello you. I have swans and ducks all around the place. And they just want to be your friend. Something weird is happening with this rod here. Definitely hit with summer. Sitting watching the rod tip bounce. Throw a tip in like that. So I'm just gonna try and I can feel the lead kind of coming across the mud. Oh, I made a bit of a bit of a bite. Hooks are flying inside his mouth. So let me see if I can maybe grab it here and get it unhooked in the water. Hopefully, need to take it into the bank. It's just hooked on the side of the mouth. Tiny, tiny little river pike, and away it goes. I knew there was something weird about the bite. The rod tip all of a sudden went like that there, so it wasn't big enough to pull the clip, the, the drop arm out, but it was enough just to make the rod tip bounce a bit. So it's a bit of a lesson, even though the rod tip might not be, the, the drop arm might not go. There's no harm in looking and seeing, well, the drop arm hasn't went, but if the rod tip's going like that there, then 
you know, lift up, take the slack out the line. Like I felt the little tap, tap, taps. So there was clearly a fish there. Let me get another bit and get another one cast out. Anyway, not a blank. We're off the mark. A little tiny jack pike on the whole pot on the pollen. And I got the brolly up with the bivy up just in time for the rain. Something isn't right with the two with the uh, the red delcoms I have. I think the sensitivity dial has gone on all three of them. Normally you can uh, lower the sensitivity to something like six inches, where there has to be like six inches of line movement to get a bleep. Uh, doesn't seem to work at the minute. So the wind blowing the lines, triggering the uh, triggering the uh, the alarms to go off. But where I'm sat, I'm sat looking at the rods. I can see the drop arms. I can see the two rod tips. It's just the wind. So I just have to keep an eye on it and chill out that way. Ah. Got the kettle on the go. We're going to have a cup of coffee now in a minute. I have a new reel to show you. Uh, in fact, I could probably show you that way the kettle's on. I think I've run out of gas here. So I'll have to fill up the kettle with some petrol. But the reel. The reel, the reel, the reel. Oh. I went on to AliExpress and was basic, I was I wasn't really looking, I wasn't really doing anything really. I was on the on one of the forums and I was chatting to one of my friends who is a he's a muskie angler in America. And I was saying to him, you know, uh, I'm looking at getting a a basic a basic workhorse of a reel, you know. I didn't really want to spend a lot of money because I don't have a lot of money. So I said to him, you know, uh, I don't really want to kind of blow a lot of money on it. Uh, he was saying, you know, Shimano Tranks. And I laughed and said, there's no way I'm spending £200 at the minute on a fishing reel. So, he said, why don't you look at the, uh, a make called PC, or PC Fun. PC Fun, PC Fun. And I went, is it alright? I was asking him, like, a load of questions. And he sent me a load of, he sent me some reviews that were done on YouTube by saltwater lure anglers that were catching uh, GTs and uh, sea bass and things like that there. He sent me a load of videos on guys with musky fishing using these reels. So, I got the PC Fun Alios. It's quite a nice reel. It has a it has a rather insane drag. It's got 30 pounds of drag. So, yeah, it's a bit of a beast. 30 pounds of drag. Nice black and red styling. I filled 150 meters of 60 pound power pro on it. I mean, I had, a, had that lying around and I took the 150 meters without a problem. It's a 300 size rail. It's got nine ball bearings. It doesn't actually weigh that much, but it's the perfect uh, accompaniment for the uh, the heavier rod, heavier lure rod I have. The uh, the Savage Gear lure rod I have, the nine foot one that it's actually on now, is designed to throw lures up to 350 grams. So that's that's a heavy, heavy lure. But it was. I mean the RRP for it, I can't remember what the exact RRP was but he sent me a link to uh, to where it is in AliExpress and it was like something like 50 quid so I gave it a go thinking alright okay uh, let's give it a go and this morning when I got the bait rods out I spent a good 20-25 minutes you know chucking big heavy plastics and I know it's very early at this point and I haven't really got the reel dialed in yet 
I'm kind of just figuring out the drag and things like that there. But I'm impressed with it, you know. I am impressed with it. I know people talk about lose reels and you know abu reels. I have an abu reel. It's like an original uh, made in Sweden reel. Again, bomb proof, absolute brilliant reel. The thing I like about the uh, the the Alliance is when you click the uh, the spool release, this little button pops up at the side, and if you ever wanted this to disengage it without clicking the handle, you click that there. I don't know. I've never seen that feature before on a. On a uh, on a bait rod, a, a, a multiplier even. I'm not so sure if this is a multiplier or a bait caster. Perhaps somebody that's more into lure fishing can uh, can let me know. But initial initial uh, initial thoughts. It's a pretty nice little reel. It matches. It fits well on the rod. It holds you know all the line that I want. And from chucking, I, del I deliberately picked some of the heavier plastic lures, you know, like the uh, the Savage Gear line throughs, like the big 25 centimeter line through lures. I deliberately picked, you know, chucking them there, so they're quite heavy. And the rod is more than capable of throwing them, so the rod was never going to be an issue. And the reel wasn't an issue throwing them either, you know. So yeah, something that's. Something that's came from Singapore. PC fun. Again, this is just an initial. This is the first day I've ever had it. You know, this is the first time it's been on the bank and it's been throwing lures. And yes, I only threw lures for a short period of time. I wasn't throwing lures all day with it. Uh, I give it a long term review. I will give it a good review. You know, I've got a couple of days planned where I'm going out with guys on the boats and we're going to be trolling, you know, some of the bigger, heavier stuff. And I'll give it a go. I mean, it can't hurt to road test the damn thing. And if the musky guys were right, then it's a decent reel, you know, for somebody that's on a budget. You know, again, PC Fun or whatever it's called. Didn't reach out to me, they didn't uh, send it to me free, I had to pay for it myself. You know, before anyone goes out and says, oh, you're, it's great because you're sponsored with people. I don't know how many times I get asked, am I sponsored by companies? It's like, no. I don't, I am not sponsored by anybody. You know, it's, it's easy for me to say that, I'm not sponsored by anybody. But, I get asked the question a lot anyway. Anyway. Let me put some more fuel in my stove and I get a cup of coffee and hopefully this wind dies down and I can get another fish because another fish would be nice. There we go. We have a wee rabbit. Still raining. I've just went out and uh, used the last of my holy mackerel oil. This is like a dyed red colour. I'm right down to like the last, well, how much is left in the syringe, hold on. Five or six mil here. So, I went out. The baits are now oiled. So, hopefully that'll put a nice scent trail through the water. And get some, get some fish coming in to investigate it. I've got a smelt and a mackerel tail on. So, let's hope that, that the pike fancy a nice big chunk of mackerel tail, and the, the, the fancy a smelt. Yeah, I have uh, five mils of it left, so I'll have to, well I can't even go to the shop and buy any because the, the, <laughs> the shops aren't open. I know you can get holy mackerel uh, oil direct from the, uh, the guy himself. But I'm just trying out something, something a bit different. Normally all the oils that I use are the ET oils. I have a lot of faith in them. But, I'd always give something a try, you know, the new Harmon trying something. I know one of the, uh, the fellas that I used to fish with in England, 
he used to soak well he used to use aniseed a lot and for some reason it worked for him it was like aniseed boily flavor and stuff and he put it into like a little squirty bottle a little spray bottle and he was adamant that this was the uh, this was the key to his success on the canals he fished and you know fair play to him he enjoyed it aniseed I never ever thought of using aniseed for for pike but I know guys that use kind of like the sweeter flavors as well like the like the Scopex squid type of, you know guys that, like the Scopex squid boilies the carp guys use I know people that would use the uh, Nash Scopex squid syrup and mix it in with some ground bait some chunks of fish you know, if it works for them it works for them you know there's no that's the beauty of pike angling there's no rights and well there's there is wrongs like don't use fluorocarbon that's a wrong you know but there's with bait ways I mean if it swims you can use it there's no point there's no, there's no way of it a pike will eat it if it swims I know guys that fish for uh, catfish in England and they catch uh, pike regularly on the uh, the squid they use I think that's a boat coming down yeah It's uh, sticking to the speed limit, I see, as they always do. Tanking through down the river, but hey ho. Well, to do a wee bit of shout out as well. I hear there's a young lad, he's nine years old. He's a young fella called David, just like me. And he's from Lurgan. David McCrenner. Or McCrenner, if I'm pronouncing your surname wrong, son, I apologise. But he's into the pike fishing, so just want to wish him all the best in his in his fishing, and I'm glad that he enjoys the uh, the videos. I do believe that it's our responsibility as anglers to encourage youngsters to take on the sport. You know, it's our responsibility to educate youngsters or novice anglers, even people that's new to the sport. It was our responsibility to to help them get into it. You know, so if you see somebody out there who's a who's a new angler, or you know somebody that's, that's starting out and they're a bit unsure, they don't quite know how to handle pike, and bring them along. You know, I've I, I honestly I have lost count of the things like um, like tresses, floats. I mean, let's be honest. Making somebody a wire trace and showing them how to make a wire trace on the bank It takes five minutes of your day You know, so you're giving the kid a wire trace You're maybe giving them a float and some weights And you're teaching them how to set the float up That kid's gonna learn from that, it's gonna go, it's gonna go on and think I met this guy and he showed me how to fish And from then on in I really enjoyed fishing And that's to me what it's all about you know, and it doesn't have to be a boy, I mean, girls can fish. You think it doesn't have to be children, it could be like a brand new novice angler. I mean, I've took guys fishing that were in their 30s and never fished a day in their life. And now they're some of the most keen as mustard anglers you've ever seen. I know one guy who was, I actually served with him, and he got very serious uh, spinal injuries and he became an amputee. He lost a foot and part of a leg below the knee and he he's now an avid fly fisherman you know he'll go out he'll rent there's all trout fisheries like go out in the boat with a fly rod and he reaches out to me on instagram a lot and on facebook a lot and it's like look at the pictures of the trout i'm catching and it's like well fair play to you son you know he used to be a his passion used to be running but obviously when he's, you can't really do that, you know, if you're not, if you've had amputations, you know, you, you kind of have to live within your, unfortunately, you kind of have to live within your limitations, you have to kind of, you know, get, get, get past it. 
And for him, and this wasn't, I had nothing to do with this. For him, the way he got past his, his injuries, and his injuries were life changing. The way he got past his injuries was to go out in a boat with a couple of his mates and chuck fly rods about and catch trout. And it's funny because from chatting to him, he says the exact same stuff that I say. You know, mental health is a big thing. It's important that we look out for each other. And this isn't me talking to other armed forces and veterans, this is just me talking to everybody. With these lockdowns, people's mental health has been nailed through the floor. You know, if you look at them, I mean, it's, 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 it's destructive. You look at the amount of people that's lost their marriages, they've lost their jobs, they've maybe lost their homes. You know, suicide rates have climbed steadily since the lockdowns. And I do believe that something really will have to be done to nurse society back to the way it was. I mean, think about it, it's basically nearly... I was told to go home and not come back to work the week of my birthday, and my birthday 24th of March. So it was like the, like the 18th or 19th last year. I was told, uh, that's it, don't come back. Because of this, the COVID, it's locked down, blah, blah, blah. And we're rapidly approaching March again. So that's going to be a full year where everyone's been locked down and been on furlough and been, you know, it's, it, it takes its toll. You know, as, as much as I want to get back to normal, as much as I want to get back to working and getting you know, a, f a proper pay, what packet? I do believe that there's going to be a lot of people out there that's going to think it's going to be stressful to get people back into a work. You know, it's... So I'm really hoping that people are given, you know, all the help they can get, all the help they need. And not just, you know, left to the fucking wolves. It's definitely a strange one now. But we just have to look out for each other. You know, I've got some, everyone has their own shit to deal with. Everyone has their own problems. But I said, uh, the people that's around me, I'd rather listen to you at two o'clock in the morning, ranting and raving, than have to turn up to a funeral to bury you because you couldn't get out of it. You just let it get on top of you and let it beat you. You know, reg regardless of how black things might seem, I guarantee you that there'll be people out there that love you and they miss you. So it's just a case of let's look out for each other. That could be the rain stopped just for a minute. The ground here is like a river that's flown underneath my feet. <laughs> oh. Do I put another rod out? Or do I take the lure rod and go and chuck some lures around for 15 or 20 minutes? Or do I make another cup of coffee? Decisions, decisions, eh? More bloody rain! Uh, well, the sun is setting. I've had two runs, one fish. I've had a little hare running around the place. And I've had a big rat that's run in front of me. So today has been eventful for the wildlife. I just think it might be time to uh, call it and go home. For some bizarre reason, the uh, the brake light on my van's making all sorts of noises at me. Now, 
it's probably I did have to get brake calipers changed. So I'm wondering did the uh, not top up the brake. I wonder did the brake fluid not get topped up or need topped up. So on the way home I'll get some dot four fluid and fill that into it and see if that makes the damn thing stop bleeping. Weird. Car trouble. It's actually turned into not a bad afternoon. Or about well, it's gonna be evening time now. Okay. Might have another run here. A little smelt, and I don't think so. No. Wiped out by weed. Is the problem with fish in the river, you get wiped out by weed. Now, so it's on the bottom. weather what absolute minging weather here we have an example of uh, council efficiency the council comes along and decides to help the anglers out by cutting down some trees that were blocking the uh, the jetties, the, these stumps here. And then, instead of taking the trees away, they just fucked them into here. Which, this is all underwater, this is all flooded. So now you end up with stuff like that, sunk out there, where you're trying to fish. So, Something that back here was like a a wee minor inconvenience is now a fucking huge problem when you're fishing out there. Well done, Council. Well done. It's not actually a bad afternoon. The rain's kind of stopped for now, but if I stand up and look that way, I can see big black clouds rolling in. So I'm going to pack up now while the getting's good and get out of here while I'm still kind of have a chance of getting everything packed away in the dry because I think it's going to throw down rain again pretty soon at least it wasn't the blank 
It's been a good day. It's been a very good day. I'll do the YouTube thing. I want to say thank you to everyone that's uh, watching the channel. I've got some strange ones. I've got some, uh, like, uh, people like really losing their temper with me for some reason. You know, I I have a simple philosophy when it comes to people that give you earache um, for we weird reasons. People don't try and bring down losers. You don't see anybody ever, uh, you know, slagging off a loser. Or trying to tear them down. So by default, I must be doing something right. I guess it's just what happens when you put your head up above the uh, the parapet, so to speak, and you have opinions. You know, the people that were well, the, th the couple of people in particular that had an issue with me were using fluorocarbon. They were big fans of fluorocarbon. I'll be honest, fluorocarbon's not pike safe. Don't use fluorocarbon. Um, I know some lure guys use it, but I don't see the point. Fluorocarbon doesn't do anything extra that a solid titanium leader does, and a pike's not going to bite through a solid leader. So, in my opinion, why would you take the risk? That's just me. I'm pretty uh, honest with my opinions. If I have something to say, I tend to say it. And if people don't like what I'm saying, well then, that's something that they have to address themselves. But, apart from that, it's been good. The channel's just about sitting at 3,000 people. Which is bananas, it blows my mind is that many people want to watch it. But, I'm very thankful for all the positivity. And all the people that have uh, like sent me messages and sent comments and stuff. It is definitely something else to see people. That, that put it this way, the positive is way, 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 way more than the negative. You know, for every negative comment I would get, you know, I would get 50, 50 comments that would be, you know, very, very positive. So, I'm not really worried about what negative people have to say. I want to thank you all for liking and subscribing. If you could do me a favour and share it on your social media, that'd be great too. Anyway guys, until the next time, tight lines.